So I thought I'd shoot this update. Um, the this is the defective coil that's uh, that I pulled from the unit, and you can see how it's it's burnt burnt up and uh, I guess you know it's not working. And uh, I purchased a replacement coil, and I'm going to install it. Um, I was fortunate the. Uh, the hoist, uh, not the manufacturer, but I guess it's the distributor, um, he actually got me a used part for better than half the cost of a brand new one. A brand new one's about 85 bucks plus tax shipping, and I paid 30 bucks for this guy. And warrantied, if it doesn't work, I can send it back. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble it and, and install it. Um, the brake uh, shoe... Uh, I pulled it out of the unit. It's got about 50 thousandths wear, and uh, this little guy here is another 80 bucks. And uh, discussing with the uh, rep there, he said, you know, the wear is minimal, and the amount of use you actually get in your own shop, uh, just stick with the part. There's not no sense in uh, replacing it. And then uh, this is just the uh, the weld repair that I did. This was the part that it actually snapped off, and I had showed earlier. So. This is the piece that this face here rides against the disc, and then the magnet, the magnet pulls this piece back off of the disc. Okay, so I thought I'd just give you a quick update on it. We'll see how it works here in a few minutes. Well, here I try to get a little shot of the brake actually working. So you can see it's pulling back the uh, the uh, plate away from the shoe. So I think the lift is uh, repaired. Okay, here's the big test. It's all put back together. 12 foot step ladders down on the ground. And now we're going to see if it's going to work on camera or if I've got the same old jinx. How about that? It's going down, going down, going down. Okay. We're going to connect it onto the my MIG welder. Put a little load on it. How about that? Hear that brake clicking up there? Working fine. Okay. How about that? It had success on camera. Gonna put this one to bed. Job done. Thanks for watching you guys. Thanks for all the comments. And uh, I'm glad I'm done. I should have done this a few years ago, actually. Okay, here's another update. Close your drawers there, Chuck. So, if you guys remember when we did a lift, I had some slop in my, uh, in my legs there. So I'm going to go out, go put it back on the surface uh, grinder, and you'll see I corrected the slop in the top of the legs, and now there's no more tilt when she lifts. The other thing I did, I put a couple of screw slots in the uh, front there of the toe so I can actually tighten it up so there's no slop in the toe. Okay, so another quick update, and uh, I'll bring, bring you back here in a minute. Okay, this is the final update on the toe jack. Beat this guy to death. But I just wanted to show you that I've got uh, uh, basically almost two inches um, cantilever out there. And uh, this machine weighs 2,000 pounds, so I'm lifting up at least about 1,000. And working fine.
real happy with it. It's worked out well and happy with the build. Hope you guys all enjoyed. It's worked out well. Some of that rock you just saw there was actually in the slab of the concrete. Okay, last of that update. Okay, the final update is uh, my pecunier collets that I was working on. As you can see, uh, all this uh, info has been up on my whiteboard for quite some time. Some time ago that I started on this and have been moving on to other things. And uh, this is actually the uh, double boost light. <laughs> but um, uh, I'm done. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not totally finished, but I'm finished with attempting what I was trying to do. As you might remember, if you looked at the earlier videos, I was trying to make some brooches, uh, trying to broach uh, the inside of the collet so that the, the uh, tap would register on it. And this is one that I built, uh, and it works fine. Uh, it's just the clamping pressure works well, um, but it does not have the brooch inside. Uh, I think I made this one for a number eight. Um, this is a purchased unit, which is a number six. Um, I think I picked it up for fifteen dollars. And uh, uh, with all this discussion and, and work on it, I, I, I've got blanks built here that are ready to go to uh, finish up. But what I'm going to end up doing to finish up the sizes that I need. And, and when I say need, I just need to have in the drawer for someday when I use the tool, is that I'm not going to broach uh, this upper end as it's shown, but I'll end up drilling and putting a set screw. Nope, I'm in the frame there. I'm not going to broach this upper end, but I'll be ended up drilling and putting a set screw in that will lock the tap in place, um, a small set screw, and that'll solve uh, my build. Um, as much as I'd like to perform and, and get that brooch in there, uh, it's so small and it's a blind brooch. Um, I, I just don't need to waste any more time on it in my own, my own time. I've got other things to go on. Okay, so that's it. And uh, the old whiteboard with my, uh, my information. Uh, I have copied it on paper, but my whiteboard will be clean and I'm going to move on to something else. Uh, appreciate all the guys that were watching and uh, thanks for following on it. This is the uh, an update of a or a, uh, a beginning of a project that I started some time ago. Um, I've got a Powermatic uh, bandsaw here, uh, variable speed, high low speed on it, and um, I started building a uh, circle jig for it. This was a uh, photocopy off the website, the uh, stock circle jig that can be built, and uh, I started working on it some time ago, uh, building the parts, and uh, for some reason I stopped. So um, that's a project I, I want to get finished and uh, so I'll be uh, filming that and uh, showing you how it works out so that's co hopefully coming up here on my channel again guys thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoy all the videos one last item uh, I thought I'd add a blooper uh, part of my video here um, or a learning curve or mistake. The other day I had this drill press vise uh, set up like in the, in the uh, drill press and I was using my clamp setup that I had uh, built to hold the vise in place on the drill press. And I had basically a 7 8 drill bit in here and the vise was not bolted down to the table. It was basically held with two of these units, one on the side and one on this back. Well, 
that 7 8 drill bit bit and the next thing I knew um, that vise was down here on the floor quicker than I could even uh, I was just happy it didn't hit me and didn't break the drill bit didn't do any damage to anything uh, and taught me a lesson so now the vise is bolted to the table no more uh, taking chances like that um, uh, just trying to be lazy on alignment so uh, thought I would uh, add that uh, I wish I had it on film it would have been a good one to show the the goofball mistake um, learning curve is uh, my buddy Tom Lipton when I uh, discussed this with him he said the drill press is one of the most dangerous items in the uh, shop and uh, I think I can agree with him Anywho, thought you guys would enjoy and uh, learn from my mistake and be safe, that's for sure.